Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Building a Nation with Polonia Vorshevar. It's after Christmas, a lot of stuff's happened over the Christmas period. We're back today for the first leg of our tie against Real Madrid. Couldn't have really asked for a diff more difficult tie. Although, frankly, as you would have seen, even if we'd got first in our group, we would have got Barcelona. So it really was a case of screwed either way. Starting today on the page of Gavin Bazunu, who I was told to have a look at again. If you want to have a look at players, just drop them in the comments. I will add them to the list. Um, a 26-year-old Irish keeper who is still at City, or rather he was at Shamrock Rovers to begin with. And then there's just this gap. Um, and he's been... Did he just not have a club for ages? It seems like... That's really weird. I guess it's because of the way the database is. That's probably when I turned on the English lead. Point is, he moved over to Manchester City um, and has really not played much for him, to be honest. Uh, 15 appearances in the last sort of seven, eight seasons. Lad needs to get himself a move. He's got loads of cats for Ireland. Why doesn't he just move to a different side? Um, he's got decent value. Look at the... Uh, to be fair, the wages he's on would suggest that maybe... Um, he's basically Steve Harper at Manchester City at this point, isn't he? One thing else I wanted to point out is Lech Poznan actually did win another Champions League match. They won away at Inter, 1-0 thanks to a Geronimo Rulli own goal, which was enough to see them leapfrog RB Leipzig and into third place. So that's amazing. Lech getting third in their Champions League group is phenomenal, which means they go into the Europa League where they'll play Milan. Um, they beat Inter and now they have to play against Milan. So, okay, fine. They're not going to do very well there. But the point is they got there and it's great for coefficient points for them and for Poland in general. And it shows that we're just starting to squeak out a little bit more quality from sides like Lech. And that pleases me a lot. Also, the border upgrade in the Youth Academy again, which is brilliant. We're already at um, superb and I think we can only go one more step up to state of the art. So our youth facilities are phenomenal, which is really going to help with us really focusing on bringing through the young players. Because uh, that's what we're going to have to do. We also got another five and a half million pounds from the Everton Escobar deal. I, I decided to take the money because Porto weren't playing him very much. He was offered out on loan and I figured the problem it could be that he'll end up leaving and we'll get nothing. So I figured taking another five mil from the deal, we've been paid over 10 million pounds in that deal and that is very, very nice for our transfer funds. A couple of other things I noticed. Some of you might have pointed this out to me. I don't know. I haven't seen yet. Um, Mario Mandzukic is now managing Zag, which is pretty damn cool. Um, not the normal Zag, a different Zag, but he is still managing them. And Wojciech Szczesny is now the manager of Piast. So a couple of them um, sort of big names in world football are coming into the Polish league now to do some managerial stuff. And I think that is a sign of the times. And, and that's really, really pleasing to see big names come into the Polish league to manage. I'm a huge fan. And one final thing, Davor Vinjevic got a pectoral strain. He's quite literally strained his tit. I don't know what he was doing, maybe that Terry Crews thing, but that's the only thing I could think of as to how he got that injury. Weird one. And annoyingly, Alberto Freitas, the day before today's game, picked up an injury. Um, I think he's still going to be able to play, but he will be at slightly reduced capacity. And Peralta, annoyingly, um, he got a slight knock in the last league game, but he was fine and I took him off. And now he's out for like seven weeks. I hate those injuries. It's really frustrating. So Campagnaro is probably going to have to play both games against Real, and that could be a problem. The first of which is a signing in. This is Jonas Opris, I think that's how you pronounce his name. Do let me know any Romanians in the comments. Um, yeah, we needed more backup on that left-hand side with the likes of Victor Hugo and, of course, Blaise Lisic. Uh, we do have Mufta, but he's out on loan. So when this opportunity came up, he was right very highly. The deal has cost us £4 million, but he's got great crossing, good dribbling. He's got 11 finishing, which is always nice. He's fairly tall. He's fast. He's agile. He's pretty strong as well. He runs with ball often. I've just started training him to make sure he's in that role. Then we'll get him on the uh, gets into opponents area more often. But I do feel like just... The deal was too good to turn down. For four million pounds, I couldn't really say no. And the other signing I've made is Abraham Upoku. He isn't here yet. He'll be joining us at the end of the season for 4.4 million pounds from Monaco. Now, you might look at I don't know why it's still showing Lurvik here. I assume it's just because of the way that this uh, skin is. He does have the inconsistency problem, which we might have to look at. Um, but he is joining us at the end of the season. He's only 15 years old. And my scouts rated him insanely highly. So I was prepared to take a risk to bring him in so young purely because you could also declare for Ghana at some point, which could cause us problems with the uh, international wage clause and all that. But I, I genuinely think that this guy could be one for the future. We bring him in now, get him trained so he counts as homegrown, and I think he could flourish for us later down the line. And that was this, a 2-0 victory over Viswa Krakow, but you'll notice that Zvigawa played as a striker. I decided that we needed some more ideas, so I've made a different form of the tactic with him as a striker. Now, the only changes other than that, um, he's got some... I've also made that these guys cross towards him because he's got that added height. Admittedly, his goals were a penalty and a free kick in this game but we did have other chances um the other change is that because of the space left by him i've swapped these two over so garcia now operates in the sort of center right and 
Diego Silva on the centre left at the back just to sort of plug the gaps a little bit better. But I think it worked quite well. It worked well in the friendlies. We were certainly scoring a lot more goals and looking more fruitful. Still looking solid at the back as ever. And hopefully it will enable Zvigawa to just play into his strengths a little bit more because I think we are going to need something. And it allows us to play balls over the top a bit more, which is very useful. No real need to show you the league because you know where we are in that one. Nothing's really changed. We've only played one league game. Today, it's Real Madrid. Um, we're not going to be playing the striker t tactic today, I don't think, against... I mean, maybe we should. I don't know. Maybe we should give it a crack and see what we're capable of with it, to be honest. Um, we need to do something. Amazingly, Rangers only lost 3-2 to Atletico in their first leg. They really are pulling up trees, they are. Okay, so I've made him as a deep line forward. Um, and he roams from position. That way, he kind of still operates like a shallow striker. However, he's more advanced with his starting position and he will make runs in behind, which is just opening up a few more avenues, I feel like. it's The tactic isn't that different overall, but it just seems to be a little bit more... We'll see how it does over a more, longer period of time. I'm prepared to test it for the rest of the season in the league. And... It's a free hit against Real Madrid, so we might as well try and actually have a crack. We're not going to go on attacking, of course. Unfortunately, Peralta can't start, which is a shame. Garcia, I'll probably bring back in Roscoe for this game. Um, and Silva's fine to go. Freitas is still nursing a slight knock, but he'll be fine to start the game. Alborosin and Stamler. I want to start Aslan for this one, because Stamler just does not fill me with confidence at all. He does some things really well, but I just, I don't know, I'm concerned about him. Franceschi, of course, in goal. Lisic or Victor Hugo? I feel like because it's the home leg and we need that attacking threat, I want Victor Hugo because he's going to make those runs for us. So that's going to be our lineup. Let's check the bench. So on the bench, we're going to go with Oprich, uh, Stamler, Garcia, Kevin, Pandorovic, Lisic, and Gorosito. So lots of options on that left-hand side. He's just starting to get used to that role a little bit. He'll be fine. Okay, so they've got Kevin Roos, uh, not Kevin Roos, Kurt Roos up top there. Um, oh, this was the guy. I don't know if I mentioned it a couple of episodes ago. There was a guy I was looking for but wouldn't sign for us. This is him. He is a world star player and they got him for £5 million. Ugh. Oh. What a deal that would have been if we pulled that off, but he just wouldn't even talk to us. Sozor, he'll now go and score against us. Right then. Here we go. Um, all on the line here. We've beaten Real before. It's going to be weird seeing us playing with a striker, to be honest, for the first time in this save, really. Victor Hugo. But you see that he's making slightly deeper runs. And it just allows us. But he does also drop. You'll notice it later on. Um, he gets very, very narrow to Victor Hugo. Oh, what a start. We lead inside the first minute. Mateus Zvigawa scores the goal. What are you doing? That can't be offside, surely. Awards the goal. We lead against Real. What a start to this in the Champions League. We've already got the lead. Mateusz Zvigawa. Victor Hugo, I think his shot deflects into the path of Zvigawa. And he's... Oh, what about that? First time effort with absolutely zero backlift. It's 1-0 to Polonia Vorshova. Come on! I kind of feel like he probably would have scored that goal regardless of where he was playing because he wasn't actually occupying, occupying a sort of striker role there. Um, but you never know. You see what I mean? He's just that little bit higher up the pitch. Uh-oh, Aslan's been caught out now. Asensio, Roos is in. What a tackle. No! Oh. Their first shot of the game, and it's their new man, Brian Uhaldegaray. Um, the guy that we nearly... I say nearly. The guy that I identified as a signing, let's say. Um, we actually defended this fairly well. It's a wonderful tackle from Alborosin, but then... Oh. And Franceschi nearly keeps it out. It's one all here. Oh, dear. Weirdly, I think opening up that space has caused Garcia to take an awful lot of long-range strikes. Oh, good block. Real do seem to be coming into the match a little bit more now. Uh, the fact that we took the lead against them again, though, we're really showing that we can't... Oh, no. Oh, God, please. No, no, no. Okay, again, with the whole letting it just turn around and run. Okay, I need to figure out who's taking all these long shots. So I think it's a Roscoe, but I don't know why. <laughs> Let's see, second half. I've also told Zvigawa to shoot a little bit less, just so that we keep the ball moving a little bit more and don't take unnecessary chances when we actually have got an opportunity now. We've got a lot of the possession now. It's really building up in our favour. We can try and create some opportunities against Real now by moving the ball a bit slower. Ivanovic brings it down there. Victor Hugo got men forward for once. A Roscoe. Lots of space out wide. Campanero is out there. Oh, he's drilled it across the face of goal and he should have just tried to square that for Zviggy. Alborosin. Sure thing. Oh, God, the keeper's missed it. Lassa bang with the goal. Polonia 2, Real Madrid 0. What the hell happened there? Courtois has just come and flapped at one. Mental. Alvarezine with the throw, fine. But look, the goalkeeper's just missed it. And bangs at the back post to bang one in. We're 2-1 up in the Champions League against Real Madrid. Come on. What a performance this has been. We really are, have put in a shift tonight. And I'm so, so proud of the lads. Oh, just the goal we can see. Oh, God. Careful. <laughs> Maybe there's another one. Maybe we've got more to the... Maybe there's more to this team. Lisic. Got a Sito. Men running forward. He's got Zvigarwe. He's through and he's scored. It's 3-1. Oh my giddy aunt. Brian Gorosito. It's Polonia Vorshova 3. Real Madrid 1 in the Champions League. This is insanity. Um, we've absolutely 
we've done really, really well today. Lisic driving forward, drops inside for Gorosito, but this is all him after that. The defenders keep backing off and backing off and backing off, and he's put it past Courtois, who's flapped at it once again. It's 3-1. Come on, win it. Here we go. Orozco could set us on the break here. So Vigar was... We've got men forward. He's just taking his time over it. Finds Lisic. He's into the channel. Oh, what a chance. That could have been four. Um, what a what a performance. Oh, God, no. Victor's throw. He's, this is going to be a goal for them, isn't it? Oh, it is as well. Victor makes it 3-2 here. Ah, oh, Jesus. We're giving it a crack. Um, I just don't know if going to cautious would have made any difference when we went 3-1 up. It's a great ball from Davidoff across there. The cool water. And Victor just slipped. I mean, Franceschi might could have done better at home. Ah. Oh. Oh, go on, Ziggy. One more. Vigawa, saved by Courtois, Campagnara on the rebound. Freitas puts it in and it's 4-2. I don't believe what I'm seeing. Alberto Freitas makes it 4-2 to Polonia Vorshiva over Real Madrid. You are witnessing this. What a free kick from Zvigawa. Keeper, again, Courtois has been absolutely outrageously bad in this match. It's 4-2. Come on. Right, now we're going cautious. 13 shots on target against Real Bloody Madrid. Holy Christ. What a performance. I'm lost for words. This is the biggest win that we've had in this entire save. Vigawa. And there we go. Polonia 4, Real Madrid 2. It could have been 4-1 as well. But Freitas' goal has given us a real chance at getting through. Come on. Uh, Juan Orozco, ironically, man of the match. What a bloody win. That is mental. And what a performance overall. Jesus Christ. Come on. Right. League game now so everyone can calm down for a bit. Right. We're back. I've calmed down a bit now. I'm a very happy man right now. It's nice that the pendulum... Not that there was, I mean, maybe Courtois a little bit, I suppose. But we played really, really well. And I'm super, super happy with that. Let's just get into today's game against Pogon and see what we can come up with. So due to the fact that I am a complete nincompoop, uh, we literally have no centre-backs that I can put in in place of Freitas, who is completely knackered. Because there was a B-team match, and because we're not all fully back to match finish yet, this is probably going to suck. I've taken what I learned in the Real Madrid game and applied it to this. So now the striker in this tactic has shoot less often and... Um, we've lowered the tempo slightly because we got much better with a slightly lower tempo, I found. They might just have been Real Madrid, but we'll see. Another Zvigawa. Wait. Sorry if this particular game might seem a little bit condensed. It's just I felt like the Real Madrid game probably took up quite a lot of a chunk of the episode. And I wanted to make sure we focused on that because, let's face it, that is the uh, the main attraction here. So, yeah. Um, Oprich to take the ball. This is going to be his first start for us as well. I know it's in the back of the net. I think that's going to be a foul, though, in the end. Um, oh, no. It has been awarded. Albert Racine's goal. Um, strange from that. Oprich's ball is put in. Bang heads it down and Alberacin just gets in front of the keeper and puts it in. I know if they've changed, I think the update has changed things so you no longer see the replay guaranteed straight away. Which makes sense really because it was a bit of a spoiler. Um, Jovanovic again, cutting through. Oh my god, he's straight in. Oh, <laughs> considering, we're oh no. Oh, they've scored a goal. Ah, oh, Marek Polak, a man, 18 goals this year. This guy is an absolute phenom while playing for Pogon here. Has scored against us. Only, I believe that's the second goal we've conceded this year. And unfortunately, with players playing out of position in the way they are, nobody was tracking runners. It's still a great run from Polak. 18th goal of the season and Pogon are level. That's frustrating. I would prefer us not to throw away a potential unbeaten season, though, if we can avoid it. Uh, the shame that we've actually conceded a goal, really. Albrecht's cutting through again. Ah, oh, it's been fouled. No, Oprich. But what, back post. Zvigawa's header, caught. And we did all that without Ernesto Peralta in the Real Madrid game too, which is interesting. Jovanovic around the side for Oprich is in. Oh, over the crossbar. Lovely little turn from him though. Come on, let's just find the winner in the second half. Get through a difficult game. Uh, you know, they're, they're not, they're no mugs, Pogon. They're just on the edge of the championship group potentially. Uh, and we need to try and pull something out with players out of position. Intercepted. Orozco picks it up. Zvigawa comes short. Back post. Cleared away. Jovanovic is going to have another crack at it. He's all the way in. Oh, nearly. Stamler bringing it out. That's one thing he does do well is he can run with the ball. Campagnaro, at least he's making a run. Jovanovic is coming through again and drills it wide. He loves those positions. Jovanovic, one last chance here. Ball put it in the box, headed away. And I think we're going to draw here at Pogon, which is a bit of a shame. First drop points for a while. But hey, after the elation of the Real Madrid result, sometimes you're going to get them. At least we haven't lost and we've kept our unbeaten run going. It's a shame to concede our second goal of the season this year. Um, but to be fair, two goals conceded in 21 matches is still pretty damn solid, isn't it? And quite frankly, who cares? Because we beat Real Madrid 4-2. We put four goals past Real Madrid. We've got the second leg in the next episode. If we get through, this will be a, a big, big moment for us because coefficient-wise, it'll be worth a lot of the points. Not only that, but it would signal to Europe that we're actually, we mean business this season. We're capable of beating a group winner, hopefully. Uh, and that would really be something. That would give me so much hope for next season and we could sign the right players, maybe get a rep boost, all sorts of stuff. So if you've enjoyed this episode, I really can't imagine why you wouldn't have done, frankly, a 4-2 victory over Real Madrid. New stuff going around 
around, new signings, all kinds of positive vibes. So next episode is going to be the second leg against Real Madrid away from home. That is going to be an absolute humdinger. All we have to do is avoid, if we can avoid defeat, we're through. If we can lose by a single goal, we're through. Um, there's a lot to be done. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.